Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to install a first flush boost. So the idea with this is it automatically gives you a big 20 litre or five gallon chamber of water. So it means you don't have to have such a long bit of pipe. So if you're constrained for space in a height sense, uh, this will give you a really good first flush volume. Um, typically we will ask you to calculate the exact volume and then create the right length of pipe. But more often than not, 20 litres per dam pipe, as a rule of thumb, is going to work pretty well. So this is a nice way to get that volume. Anyway, let's get on to it. So the boost comes as this, uh, this chamber, really. What you'll need as well, you'll need to buy yourself a, or you'll need to have a first flush kit separately. Not installed, but you'll need to grab both, both kits. So you grab your standard first flush, and then you boost in order to make your special chamber. So to start with, you're going to have your T-piece um, and it might be this one, it might be the standard T-piece, whichever one it is. We're going to use the uh, catch-all T for now. But the first thing is cut that gap according to the instructions on your uh, first flush diverter kit, a bit of solvent weld uh, primer uh, and then glue and then glue that in place. Now that we've got that T in place, you'll need a short length of pipe. Now, in choosing this, you might want it really short or you might want it a little bit longer, up to you. For me, I'm just going to use a length of about one foot, uh, about there, just because of the height that I've got this positioned. If that pipe happens to be higher, or if you're installing it vertically, and the T-piece happens to be higher just based on your particular property, you might want this to be a bit lower. So, or a bit longer so that the boost is sitting lower and that will allow you to access the base for any maintenance uh, which might need to happen periodically. So anyway, I'm not going to glue that in just yet though, but the first thing is you do want to grab that pipe and then we're going to glue it into this T, so a bit of uh, primer and glue, away we go. Next thing is we get this special uh, this ball which is in its own sort of cage and this forms the valve. So all that happens, it just drops down straight down into the end there, it just sits in position and that's just there to keep that ball uh, in place. So when you've got this kit you'll probably have a spare ball and a spare seat in that kit, you don't need those so you can put them in the shed for the moment. Um, and just install this one. So now that you've got this in place, a bit of primer and glue on the pipe, and then we're gonna put this in. Now that that's in place, and while that's setting, uh, you probably wanna hang on to it just for the moment, and then you're gonna have two uh, feet like this. You're gonna have two brackets. I would put these on first. So on the base, there's two little recesses. So you wanna get those, pop them in position, uh, you might want to pre-mark where those holes are, you might want to pre-drill those holes first and you just want to screw that in. So there's just two fasteners uh, per foot and just choose the right fastener for your wall type. Now that we're all glued up, now that we've got our feet in place, we're going to put the top bracket on. This will just make sure that this unit is kept really nice and steady. So we're just going to snap that on. Now that the boost chamber is fixed in place, we're going to put on the end cap. So the first thing to do, I'm going to show you how to do it with these slow release valves, um, this little black fitting. You'll have these little washers peel off one of the washers. I'm going to use one of the black ones, the one millimetre one. So the one millimetre one is a good start point. Uh, it'll do the job for most people. The different hole sizes mean that the water will drain out at a different rate. So one millimetre will typically do the job nicely. I'm going to pop that into place. Uh, I've got the top side facing me. It actually says top on there, so I have that facing you. Now that we've got our washer uh, in this fitting, the next thing we're going to do is put the end cap on. So you want to make sure that you've got the O-ring in there. You may have a clear version or a white version of this, depending on which uh, first flush diverter kit you've bought. So just pop that skinny filter through, 
screw that uh, end fitting on, like so, and then we're just going to push this in and then screw it on into place. There we go. Screw it up nice and firm, make sure that it's nicely sealed, um, and that's how you install the end fitting when you're using a slow release valve onto a first flush boost. Now we're going to install an electronic release valve onto our first flush boost. You'll have this big filter and also an end cap. You'll have this clear end cap with a black O-ring inside there. Make sure it's in place. Uh, the filter is super important to put in place. It stops any sticks, any larger debris getting caught in the ball valve of the electronic release valve. So very important that you pop that in. So just slide it in place. You'll feel it seat in there beautifully. And then grab this uh, clear filter over the top and then screw it on. So to set up our electronic release valve, I'm just going to take off this clear cover. Um, I'm going to open up this hatch here and then there's a couple AAA batteries in there. So put your two AAAs in there. When you close that up, you'll see that little LED start to flash periodically. Now we want to set our reset interval and our drain time. The reset interval is how frequently the first flush is going to do its thing, how often it's going to drain water. So I'm going to go to five days first. Now if you're in a medium to low polluted area, perhaps a suburban area, five days is probably going to do the job. After five days, a lot of the time there'll be enough small matter on a roof where first flush starts to become meaningful. If you're in an area where there's no dust, no road pollution, um, you're a bit further out of town, no overhanging trees, maybe you want to increase that. Maybe you want to make it two weeks um, or one week. And that means that it's not going to flush as often. And if you don't flush as often, that means you're not throwing that water away each time. So it means you'll get a little bit more yield out of your system, but you want to make sure that you're not washing too much dirty water in, into the tank. Um, and keep in mind that it's 20 litres per chamber, so decreasing that frequency, you are saving just a small portion of water. But it, it's up to you, that small portion might not be small to you, it might be huge. I'm going to go five days for now. With the drain time, uh, this holds about 20 litres, um, but depending on that pipe, there might be a little bit more water stored in the system. 20 litres or five gallons, should I say. Um, so I'm going to set that to about 10 minutes. So 10 minutes will drain around about 40 litres, um, which is about 10 gallons. So it just gives you a bit more of a buffer for draining all that water out each time. You could also set it for five minutes if you want. Check the website and we actually have a full breakdown of all those stats rather than me talking about it. So you can see that table and find out what works best for you. I'll put that cap back on, do it up nice and tight, nice and firmly. I like to take that top fitting off first, screw that on, and then loosen that union joint there so that this inside thread uh, moves freely. You just want to screw that on, get it nice and tight. My trick is I like to sort of fasten it up to about there. I'll tighten that union joint up and then I'll give it a, a final heave ho uh, to make sure it's all nice and tight. And that's all there is to installing the electronic release valve and setting it up. Uh, for your first flush diverter. So that's how to install the first flush boost. So all you need, you need your standard first flush diverter kit, whichever model you choose, and then go and grab yourself a boost chamber and that'll give you an extra 20 litres or five gallons. And that's all there is to it. Thanks guys, bye.